How are you, okay. Mr. Kamran? All is well? Uh, yes. Sorry for making you wait. No, no, thank you so much. But I I hope you are okay. Where are you? Where are you staying? You're in Pakistan? Yes, I'm in Pakistan and I'm working for a pharmaceutical group in Abu Dhabi. Okay. So, so you're stuck in Pakistan? Yes. Oh, okay, fine. So you're going to, you know that Abu Dhabi is locked down also? Yes, but no. Weeks. Yes, but now they started, uh, the resident can go out of Abu Dhabi, but still okay. uh, uh, they're working on the permit. Can you view my uh, screen? Yes, yes, we can. Just uh, expand it so it can take the whole thing. Uh, so, Mr. No. Kamran, today you are going to be covering digital transformation in the pharma industry. So, yes. I'll leave the floor to you so you can start. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. This uh, digital transformation in pharma is presented by GMP Compliance Academy, we established in Pakistan. We have uh, various services, and but our main two strategies, one for knowledge sharing and other is technical services. We have a different uh, partners in the world like Synergy USA, ISP is a leading uh, pharmaceutical uh, training and development organization in USA. Then we have association and training development. Then we have a ECTD partner, Extido from Germany. I will talk about ECTD importance and digital transformation in pharmaceutical industry. Then we have a American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists. We want to bring all these uh, leading pharmaceutical learning platforms in Pakistan. Gen then we have a joint commission of international for patient safety and hospitals. And then we have a partnership with International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in Italy. So first of all, uh, for digital transformation in pharmaceutical industry, we have to develop one strategy where we can focus full supply chain end to end. And we can focus on our demand supply, manufacturing excellence, operational excellence, customer delight experience, and also regulatory registration. Then we can also focus on our social media, operational excellence, internet things we will discuss in next slides so but the main focus in pharmaceutical industries should start from ectd ectd means electronic common technical document uh, in pakistan recently we are using common technical document so although we are using global format but still we have to make lot of files so it's totally paper based but in ectd you will make ctd as per the international format by ich but you will upload your complete registration dossier on some portal or you will submit by USB or you will submit by CD. Then we have a EBMR concept in the world which we should implement in digital transformation and pharmaceutical. It's an electronic badge manufacturing record. This is a regulatory requirement. Whatever badge you are producing, you have to maintain BMR uh, linked with the expiry of product normally it's a one year plus expiry of product so if your product is expiring for after five years so you have to keep this bmr for six years so you need lot of storage lot of requirement archiving scanning so if you have ebmr you can save lot of uh, space and you can also be more compliant for international audits and gmp inspection for export purpose then we have a links laboratory information management system where you can link all your instrument. You can develop electronic notebook. You don't need to work on the paper based. Once you receive samples for raw material or product, you can test and your result will be delivered to your customer in the production area to the labels. So there will be no release, no certificate as a paper. Then we have electronic uh, quality management system. Uh, where we have a lot of SOPs, we have to distribute to many peoples. Like if uh, we have a quality manual, we have to distribute to maybe 10 people in the company. But if we have a QMS, we can keep them, archive them in the system and they can view on the screen. And it will also be compliant to US FDA requirement for electronic signature. Then we have to focus on FDA requirement for 21 CFR compliant machinery, where data integrity is very important. Then there's another software, uh, for facility qualification, normally we say it CQE, commissioning, qualification and validation, and then calibration. To maintain your facility to fully compliant, to meet the requirement of GMP, these softwares are very important. So we can put in our planning uh, one by one. 
then uh, the latest uh, concept which we discussed uh, in different uh, presentations is an industrial revolution 4.0 this uh, concept is also adopted by pharma and it is converted into pharma 4.0 why pharma cannot use the same industrial 4.0 revolution because pharma has some specific requirement pharma cannot use some generic uh, revolution because pharma has to meet certain requirement for drug manufacturing we call it good manufacturing practices so that's why isp and us fda define pharma 4.0 with four pillars resources information systems uh, organization and processes and culture so it contains all the requirement of ichq10 q10 is pharmaceutical quality system but when we integrate these pharmaceutical quality system with knowledge management and we put this electronic requirement digitalization and ems qms then we got the data maturity data integrity in our processes in our instrument then ultimately we got pharma 4.0 similarly if we are making digital transformation in pharmaceutical industry we can improve our supply chain processes because we know our uh, pharmaceutical growth depends on efficient uh, uh, demand and supply so here you can see uh, china is leading then is the india then is the usa so digital transformation can save lot of our resources and it can improve our lead time to deliver the product as per requirement of our customer then if we see the digital transformation experience uh, post covid uh, so we can see here before uh, like uh, trial clinical trials uh, our on site operations or protocols these was very simple but uh, now even gmp inspection inspectors are not coming on the site due to risk so they are doing a remote visit uh, and they just will uh, view documents as a desktop audit in their offices then if we have clinical trials before investigators were going on the site to monitor these uh, clinical trials now they are using digital transformation or other application then if uh, we are talking about patient experience now digital patient engagement is improving telehealth is improving and it will continue post covid also as per iqia data analysis it's a new normal now pharma 4.0 is also triggering a digitalization in automated pharmacies so there will be automated pharmacy in the future and it will be like a disruptive technology for the normal pharmacy chain then uh, artificial intelligence is also playing very important role in the development of product so these are also being used in r&d regulatory manufacturing excellence and supply chain management thank you so much this was the very brief if you have any question we can discuss Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes. Can you see me? Yes. Yes. Any question? Okay. Yes, I do have questions here. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Where do you see? Uh, sorry, this is for YouTube. Just a minute, sir. Okay. Where do you see the pharma industry going in the Middle East? pharma industry in middle east have a very good future because uh, they are following global standards okay and they have a good price yeah and uh, if you see a, a saudi arabia is the biggest market then is the uae then is the qatar then other uh, smaller countries if we see since last years many multinational who were dependent upon uh, the importing the product now they are yeah. making the local setup what is mm -hmm. the reason even if i gave you example of uae where i am working if you do even one step in the country you will get 10% more price as compared to imported if mm. imported is getting like 100 dirham and you are doing only secondary packaging you will get 110 dirham okay so that's why the pricing policies and profitability is encouraging 
other companies to rely on the local manufacturing. That's why in Saudi Arabia, as I told, it's the biggest market. Uh, now, Snowfi has established their plant. Pfizer has established their plant. GSK has their plant. Similarly, mm-hmm. in UAE, uh, there were the 10 companies and now they are targeting 2030. There will be 30 companies. There's yeah. a GSK plant is coming. Now, uh, Snowfi Alazi have their site. There's uh, many Indian companies. We have a two site. Uh, one is for oil solid and one is for injectables. Both sites are built by Italians. So this uh, market is going. There's a lot of potential. And also these markets are uh, working as a center of supply chain. Like uh, uh, these uh, Gulf markets are supplying to Yemen, Iraq, uh, Syria, Libya, where uh, situation is not so stable, but uh, their medicines are acquired. Mm. And profitability is very high. And normally in the Middle East, we don't consider only Middle East. We call it MENA, like Middle Mina East region, and North yeah. Africa. Yes. yes. So MENA will go till like a North Africa till Egypt. Egypt is also a very big market. Then there's Algeria. Then there's a Sudan. So it's a very big market. Big, if big you market. See, yeah. Yes. If you see the top four market in the world, the first is US, okay. then is the Europe. Then is the Europe, and then is the CIS, like Russia, and then is the Gulf. Okay, so we're the fourth. Yes, fourth, and it is due to growth, and mm-hmm. it is due to profitability, okay. good pricing. And uh, also, I want to add one thing. There is a stringent regulatory requirement. Stringent regulatory requirement means in Pakistan, we don't need clinical trials, we don't need bioequivalence. But in UAE, you have to perform clinical trials or bioequivalence on human to prove your product is safe. So yes. normal registration time is almost two years. Okay. Um, there are two more questions. Uh, is this digitization or digital transformation in pharma? Is there any? Is there any digital transformation in the pharma industry that we're seeing upcoming? I think he's asking for Pakistan, if I'm not mistaken. Like I, I explained you that digital transformation is a chain it's not like a one step you have to modernize all your steps according to your process mapping so yes. if you are receiving the material so first of all you should have a warehouse management system mm-hmm. then if you have a production then you should have a production manufacturing called electronically as i explained ebmr even mm-hmm. you can buy a different uh, i don't want to take the name of many well-known companies european they have a complete solution for the pharmaceutical mm. industry. Then you have to digitalize your labs. Then you have to digitalize your regulatory system. Like I told, you should have a regulatory information management system or you should have an ECTD, electronic common technical document. Okay. So if you have a one policy, in policy, you can make your pillars. Like in one year, we will make warehouse digital. Then next year, we will make production. Then we will make engineering. Then we will make like a regulatory and business development. So uh, you have to complete the chain. And a lot of companies in Pakistan, they are doing. This is where it answers also the other question, which I think you answered, which are the challenges of the implementation systems in hospital and healthcare. I think uh, you have tapped into this already because um, just uh, um, creating the digital transformation in the pharma industry will help those entities, be it hospitals or healthcare uh, systems, to actually uh, elevate. Uh, Mr. Ghulam, do you need anything from Mr. Kamran? Uh, I think also we can tap into medical tourism, which is something very big in the Middle East, given that you are also in Abu Dhabi. Um, We have, because I work also with some pharmaceutical companies here, and they're all... uh, tapping into medical tourism, but I don't know still how they're going to be uh, going with the healthcare authority on this one. So maybe you can give us a bit of insight. Yes, actually medical tourism is uh, means uh, you can go for your treatment and you can also uh, visit the areas like uh, yes. Singapore, like UAE. So UAE is the second uh, largest healthcare system in the world after USA who has a JCI, Joint mm-hmm. Mission International. So mm. what is JCI? JCI means where you have a five-star experience of hospital. Just for uh, my friends, especially for Pakistan audience, uh, if you will enter in some hospital, I will not take a name uh, in the uh, Abu Dhabi or UAE. You will enter in the hospital. There will be singer. Singer will have a piano. So just you enter, maybe your mood will change. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. You will go with the car. You don't need to find uh, the parking. 
and you don't need to be where where I have to park my car. There will yeah, be the five class service. Yes, we are used to it. Yeah, yeah. Even seven star, even seven star. So then, yeah. if you will uh, take the insurance uh, token, there is a free coffee, free juice. I am sure you experience this. Then very nice waiting areas. Then you will be checked by three or four people, not by single doctor. Two nurses yeah. will check your weight, height, everything. Then second nurse will verify, and then you will go to doctor. Then digitally, your information is already with doctor. He will. Uh, give you medicine and when you will go on medicine counter there will be again tea coffee fresh juices uh, you can sit in the lounge there will be big counter they will give you free medicine by the way in pakistan normally we are taking one blister but mm. in uae they will give you one pack even Amran, if you please uh, please stop this i'm feeling like hungry <laughs> 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 okay so so uh, they will give you one pack even if you need to use 10 tablet and pack size is 30 tablets three blister they will give you three blister and they will explain you in very well uh, by mm -hmm. writing on the your pack so this is like a customer satisfaction so yeah. this is very small uh, experience but if you are talking about uh, medical tourism if you have diabetic there is a london diabetic imperial london college you have a cleveland clinic if you need heart surgery you yeah. need liver transplant there is a yeah. high end robotic surgeries in uae uh, there is a lot of excellence uh, center of, of hospitals so there is icj in yeah, uh, till 2025 uae is planning to make all hospitals 100% ICJ. So they will go to the USA it, because USA has 90%. Maybe we yes. need to uh, set up a separate conference for UAE. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I have a lot of things to talk to him about. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kamran, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. We could have talked for like hours on this topic, but yeah. we have people waiting. Thanks a lot for your patience also. And we wish you a great day and hope to see you soon here when you come to the UAE. I'm, I'm based yes. in Dubai. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, have a great day. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. much.